When I first entered the Spaceship Designer, I was overwhelmed by the amount of parts, tools, and intricacies of the environment. I am creating this series because I want you to enjoy the shipbuilding process, not endure it. After watching this video, you will have a solid understanding of where everything on the user interface is located and its functionality inside the Spaceship Designer. While you are watching the video or at the end, please let me know in the comments what you thought of the pace of the video. Did I go too fast, too slow, or just right? I read all the comments and appreciate every single one you send. Let's begin. I have temporarily hidden all the utility windows, so don't be alarmed if your screen does not look the same as mine. Movement in the designer is somewhat similar to regular movement in Starbase. The WASD keys move you forward, left, backwards, and right respectively. To move up and down, hold the spacebar or the middle mouse button and move your mouse up and down on your mouse pad. This mode of movement allows for finer adjustments of position when working on something hard to reach. This may take some time to get used to this feature. You can also move your mouse left and right to move in the respective directions. Pressing tab switches between the two mouse modes, and I'm going to refer to them as locked and unlocked. In the locked mode, you can turn the crosshair on and off with F3. This is the same command that hides the HUD elements when outside of the ship designer. In the unlocked mode, holding right click will let you look around using your mouse, like in locked mode. When clicking on file, these options are available. Clicking open or manage blueprint will show you all of your blueprints and allow you to quickly find and open whichever file you need. You can also create a new blueprint file from the screen, rename or delete your files. By clicking on the minus sign, you can sort your blueprints in different ways. The search bar usually does a trick when looking for a specific file. Frozen Byte has provided you with some blueprints right off the bat. These can be found by clicking Open Pre-made Blueprint. When you finish a design and want to build it for use outside the Spaceship Designer, clicking this button will take you through the process. This will be covered more in depth in a later episode of this series. This button will move your camera to the origin, which is the center of the build area, and this one will reset the positions of the utility windows. New Blueprint, Save, Save As, and Save Selection As are pretty simple in case you don't know what they are. New Blueprint will make a new empty file, and Save will save the workspace in its current state and prompt you to give the file a name if it doesn't have one already. Save As will save the workspace in its current state to a new file, also prompting you to name the file. Lastly, Save Selection As will save the current component selected to a new file. The Selections tab gives you more functionality when selecting components in the workspace. The Select button allows you to select a specific type of component. When relative to current selection is zero, only the component type last selected will remain selected. Clicking it will change it to 1 and will allow you to have multiple component types selected at once. Deselect works similarly to select and is affected by the relative to current selection setting. Toggle allows you to invert a selection by clicking everything. Clicking settings will open the spaceship designer settings directly. I haven't changed any of the settings here, but now you know where to find them. Another way to access this page is by pressing escape, clicking settings, and then clicking spaceship designer. Camera is where you adjust your control sensitivities and lighting brightness. The sun may not reach the inside of the work area, so you can turn up the brightness settings here. This next section of the screen is where you can open and close the various utility windows. Moving from left to right. The Asset Browser is where you will find all the components that you will use when designing a ship. Toolbox is how you will interact with these components, some of them opening up their own windows. Tool Options allows you to configure the functionality of these tools further. These three tools will be covered in more detail later in the video. The next window is the Multi-User Undo System. All actions by all members in the workspace are recorded and can be undone individually.
Scene View gives you a list of all components in the workspace, and you can select them individually from the screen. Properties will give you additional information depending on what parts are selected. The YOLAL script editor will appear automatically when the Edit Script button is clicked on Device Properties. It allows you to write your own code onto the selected chip. Building Budget displays the part count of the components in the workspace and their respective part number limits. It also displays the cost of assembly for when you decide to buy the spaceship you designed. Frozenbyte has put these limits in place for performance reasons, but as this is still alpha, everything is subject to change. The paint and material windows appear when their respective tools in the toolbar are in use. They let you paint your ship and change the material of some of the components. The save icon does what the name implies, and the X is your delete button though the delete key on your keyboard works as well. Keybinds will be covered later in the video, so don't worry about missing out. Next up are the undo and redo buttons. They do exactly what their names say. A neat function the devs have added is the ability to create modules. What is a module? It is a group of components that can be easily brought into any blueprint from the module folder in the asset browser. To create a module, select the components you want to group and click the Module Create button. A green circle will appear on the selected components. Clicking it selects all the components in the module. Now that the components are grouped, you need to save it to the Asset Browser by clicking Save Module. This option appears only when a module is selected. Attach and Detach are used to modify existing modules. To add a part to the group, it has to be touching the module. Have the part selected and click the Attach button. An M plus will appear next to your cursor. Then click on the green circle of the module you want to attach the part to. Remember, the part needs to be touching the module's components. Detaching a component is simpler. All you need to do is select the part you want to remove and click the Detach button. Next up is Test Mode. Pressing the button will place you in an isolated environment where you can test out your creations. To be able to test out your weapons against your creations in the current state of the game, the location of the spaceship designer needs to be outside the safe zone. My armor testing video was recorded at Robur Station, the local PvP hub. Hopefully, the devs will change it so this can be done at any location, but let's get back on track. Pressing F5 will bring you back to the spaceship designer work area in the same state you left it. This button will highlight detached objects in bright red. This one will help you position your spaceship so it is pointing the right way when spawning it at the ship terminal. The blue arrow is forward, and the green one is up. The global and local transform settings will be covered later in the video. Debug view only has virtual mass currently. It allows you to add mass to modular cargo crates so that the hull's durability can be tested when the ship is full of ore. This will be covered more in depth in a later episode. Returning to the asset browser window, you can see that there are many folders with different types of components. The eye symbol next to each folder allows you to hide all the parts in the workspace. When the lock icon is green, all parts can be selected and manipulated. Clicking will lock it and prevent you from interacting with parts from the folder. The attachments folder contains all the brackets used to bolt the beams together. The beams folder contains all the parts used in making the frame of your ship. Decorative plates contains parts that help add detail to your ship. Railing segments can also be found here as well. Devices has a wide variety of components. Levers, buttons, cargo crates, and more reside in this folder. 
Hard Points contains the mounting plates for thrusters, ship weapons, and ship tools. Machinery contains generator components, batteries, weapon mounts, and other utility parts. Plates is where you will find the parts to add a protective skin to your ship. There are lots of sizes and shapes to choose from. The Rails folder contains rails. These devices allow you to mount objects to carriages that ride on the rails, and they are controlled by YOLO. Finally, the Windows folder contains lots of shapes and sizes of flat panes of glass and cockpit canopy variations. Cables and pipes can be hidden and locked. The spaceship modules contain some pre-made groups of components. A module I use often is the propellant tank group. When you save a module you created, it can be accessed in the My Modules folder found at the bottom of the Asset Browser. In the toolbox there are many tools, each with their own functions. Move lets you move parts along the X, Y, Z axis. Rotate lets you rotate parts around the X, Y, Z axis. Remember the global and local transform settings. These settings refer to which coordinate system the components recognize. When set to global transform, no matter how you move or rotate the part, the XYZ axis will be the same as the workspaces, hence the name global. When set to local transform, each part has its own set of axes and rotating the part will rotate their XYZ axis as well, not just the part. The select tool does what the name implies. You can drag your cursor to select all components in an area or shift click them. Next is the bolt tool. It is used for manually placing and removing bolts. The cable and pipe tools are used to create networks and connect devices. Cables transmit electricity and YOLO information, and pipes transmit ore, propellant, and coolant. For a device to be usable in a network, it has to be connected via cables, or pipes, or both. This depends on what you are trying to accomplish with the device in question. If the connection is severed, then the contents cannot be transferred from one device to another. The durability tool shows you the warp class of your ship. The higher the number, the better. The lower the number, the less force the hull will be able to withstand. To be able to analyze a hull with a durability tool, it needs to have at least one thruster attached to it. Left clicking will show the warp class and any weak points. You can click on these and it will give you additional information about what is wrong. Right-clicking will show you the weak areas specifically in the frame. The pinker the lines, the more stress that area will experience, and it is more likely to fail while sustaining higher loads. Snap allows you to line up objects perfectly. Hovering over an object will show you snap points. Click on one and it will turn green. Then hover over the second object snap point and it will show you a preview of where it will go. After you have lined up the parts the way you want to, click to confirm the alignment. The socket tool lets you pass pipes and cables through beams and plates. In its default mode, left clicking on an object will place a socket symmetrically on both sides of the object. In tool options this can be changed so you can place both manually. Cables and pipes cannot be connected to the same socket at the same time. A neat function of this device is that buttons can be placed on the sockets. This is a clean looking alternative to snaking wires all over the place, but don't forget to bolt down the button. Paint lets you choose from a palette of colors to decorate your ship. Brush radius and depth can be adjusted in tool options. Autobolt does what the name implies. If your ship's frame has not been welded, which will be covered later, it will add brackets and bolt them for you. However, in its current state, I would not recommend using this tool very often, because it only adds the minimum amount of bolts required. This results in a much lower warp class than if done manually.
The material tool is identical to the paint tool, except instead of a color palette, a selection of materials is provided instead. I have a video testing all of the materials versus all ship weapons. It will be linked in the description and will appear on the top right. The results shown were recorded on December 23, 2020. Before the welding tool was added, all frame parts had to be bolted together with brackets. This was a very time-intensive process if any reasonable warp class was to be attained. With this tool, you can weld the beam segments together just by clicking on the parts. Unmolded segments will be highlighted orange. To expedite the process, apply to all can be selected in tool options, and all it takes is one click to weld the entire frame. Here are some keybinds that I use often, excluding movement as that has been covered at the beginning of the video. The tools in the toolbox are numbers 1 through 9. There are a few like the material and welding tools that do not have keys bound to them by default. When a part or set of parts is selected, you can quickly rotate the part 90 degrees with the X, Y, and Z keys. You can also hold down any of those keys and move your mouse for finer adjustments. Control Z is undo and Control Y is redo. Control C is copy, but what I end up using more is copy in place. To do this, first select the part with a move tool, then hold shift and drag on an axis arrow. Control V is paste and cut is Control X. Finally, pressing F5 will bring you in and out of test mode. I hope the time you spent watching this video was worth it. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could like, comment, and subscribe as it helps the YouTube algorithm show the video to more people.